Hey there, BrewTubers. Welcome to the first ever beer mail here on the Beer Patrol. I'm Average Joe. And to quote Bill O'Reilly, and this will be the only time that I ever do this on my channel, I would like to say, fuck it, we'll do it live. And we're doing it live. So the reason I'm doing a live beer mail unboxing here on the channel is mostly because I have been doing um, a lot of reviews on the channel this week because of Jenny Week. And I didn't want to put a bunch of pre-recorded videos on the channel. So I was like, let's do a live one. And uh, here we are. Uh, the second reason, though, is I enjoy live unboxings of anything, not just beer. It's really fun to interact with uh, whoever's unboxing said uh, beer mail or whatever. I mean, I, I watch a lot of unboxings. Uh, I think Peter Clueless Drinker, he mentioned that he just sometimes just watches unboxings just to watch them. And me too. So if you guys want to comment, if you're watching this live, which hopefully we have some viewers. If not, it's cool too. But if we do, throw some comments in there. I'll definitely have the um, comments up and I'll read them. And yeah, so anyway, the beer mail that I'll be unboxing today comes from a good friend of mine, Lee Russell of the now defunct Hoagley's Beer Reviews, but he does run a movie podcast called They Must Be Destroyed on Sight. So if you're into uh, movie podcasts, if you like hearing movies broken down, um, check out Lee's podcast. He has two co-hosts, which are both beer tubers. Well, one was a former beer tuber, Daniel Harper, and uh, the other co-host is a current beer tuber, Paul over at PA Brew News. And they do a great job. So in the description box, I will post a link to not only Lee's YouTube channel, but also his... Um, podcast, uh, which is on, I believe, Podbean and iTunes. So check the description box if you guys are interested in whatever is going on on Lee's uh, podcast. So uh, yeah, anyway, going to get into the unboxing here. Um, Lee told me he was going to send this when I told him like starting my channel was an actual thing and it was going to happen. And he was like, if you start your channel, I'm going to send you a beer mouth. So he kept his word because that's how he rolls. And in all honesty, uh, Lee is one of the first beer tubers that I ever, stopped, or ever started watching uh, back in 09 when I first got into craft beer and beer tubing kind of in conjunction with one another. It was him, Joe D, Mark Sinderson over at Video Beer Reviews and Chad's of Chad's Beer Reviews. And, uh, you know, Lee was the first guy I ever sent a beer mail to, period. I sent him a beer mail uh, back in the fall of 2012, so almost six years ago because I wanted to see his opinion on stuff that I had here locally. Over the years, I sent him a lot of beers because I wanted to see his opinion on some of the hyped beers in the past, like Parabola and Bourbon County Stout, Zucava, and the not whole nine. And uh, Lee was nice enough to hit me back with a few beer mails. I, obviously, I didn't have a channel when he sent me these beer mails, so that's on me. But uh, now I do, and this is the first beer mail on my channel. So I appreciate it, Lee. Thank you very much. Before I get into this beer mail unboxing, I want to say, though, I only know of one of the beers in this beer mail, and I'm not 100% sure Lee put it in there, but I'm pretty sure he did. So if it's not in there, that's on me, not Lee. Uh, I don't want to be like, oh, this is the beer that's going to be in there, and then I open up and it's not make Lee look like an ass. Not going to do that. Uh, the rest of them, I have no idea. In fact, Lee told me he also had no idea, mostly because he forgot what he put in the box. So typical Lee fashion, I guess we'll just all be surprised at what's in the box. So uh, I'll grab it here. I already opened the top of it, but I did not look in, promise. Um, I just wanted to open it up so I didn't have to struggle with it. And as you guys can see, this is a big, big beer mail, uh, 10 and a half pounds. I don't know how many beers are in there, but I'm just going to put it over here on this chair if I can bring it over here and just open it up. So a uh, quick check of the comments here, and then uh, we'll see. Lee says, thanks for the plug, dude. It comes full circle. Yes, it does, Lee. I appreciate this. Uh, Earth says, cheers, fellow. Uh, cheers, fellas. Did he call me fellow? He did not. Cheers, Earth. Uh, Lee says, hey, Earth. And Eric, Eric Gilbert says, cheers. The Don Dada. Nobody, nobody knows who that is, Eric, except for you and I, buddy. Um, <laughs> but anyway, let's get into this beer mail. So on top, in all beer mail fashion, right? Bubble wrap. We're just going to throw that on the ground. So the beer that I thought Lee had in here is right on top, but he separated the beer from the box. So let me crack open the beer. It's all taped up. You know what, I actually have, where the hell's that knife? I just have a knife here. I'm just going to cut real quickly just because to make it a bit easier. Um, always a good, Lee always does a good job of packing. He knows what's up. He's sending a lot of beer mails. So I'll show you the box first. This is the star of the show, at least for me. This is Fuller's Bottle Condition Imperial Stout Limited Edition. 
It says specially handcrafted from a traditional recipe, 10.7% alcohol by volume. And yeah, uh, we were going to do a live review, right? Right, Lee? We're totally going to do a live review of this. But apparently Lee has no more because he enjoyed it and he drank it all up. So um, I guess I'll be reviewing that by myself. I'm going to probably save that, honestly, for a special beer review, mostly because it's a pretty special beer. I've been always wanting to try this one. I like what Fuller's does, maybe not as much as Lee and Paul, but I do enjoy them. And the Imperial Stout, here's the bottle, has always been one that I wanted to try. So, um, yeah, we're going to get into that. Maybe like the 50th beer review I do or maybe the 100th. Maybe we'll sit down for a couple years. Who knows? We'll figure it out. Okay, so there's a bunch of cans in here. Got two cans here. And then two cans here. We got six cans, it looks like. So seven beers in total, which honestly, I didn't think Lee was going to actually send that much. But he did it right. And cans, they're a bit cheaper to send, right? So, uh, done data. Yes, in, in, indeed, Eric Gilbert. He said, uh, Eric says, now that Fuller's is great. I've heard great things, Eric. So... I uh, hope you're right. So the first one, I have, I'll, I'll take the beers out of the first one, first uh, Ziploc bag here that I saw. So the first beer here is from Spindrift Brewing Company, which uh, Lee has said a lot of good things about. This is their Abyss Black Lager, so a Schwarz beer. A Schwarz beer, 4.8% alcohol by volume, a 473 milliliter can, which is a 16-ounce uh, tall boy here in the States. Yeah. So, uh, Abyss Black Lager, as you can see, Spindrift Brewing. Pretty sweet. Yeah, so, yeah, no date on it, but it's a black lager. Should be fine. Should have found a place to put all these beers. I'm an idiot, so just throw this back in the box. Throw this back here, and we'll figure it out. Um, the other beer in this Ziploc bag. Alternative or alternate mul reality, alternate reality New England style IPA from North Brewing Company, juicy, hazy, tropical New England style IPA. It was canned on 318. Pretty cool label, uh, kind of just all over the place. It has like the sticker on it that's very shiny. Um, yeah, I, I've never heard of North Brewing Company. Um, where are they out of? Uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Sweet. So New England style IPA. Now I forgot to mention at the beginning of this, um, Lee wants to do, or I want to do, but Lee also wants to do a couple of duo reviews here on my channel. So Lee, you're going to have to tell me which beers that you have and that you want to do. Um, I'm down to do whatever, but you got to let me know some. We have in the comments, Bum from Jody's show. If you guys don't watch the uh, now it's on Saturday night, but the share beer show on Jody's channel, Bum is a regular panel member on that. He says, Hey guys, wow. Fuller's Imperial Stout. That's new to me. Yeah. When I first saw it show up, I was pumped up. So I'm really excited to give it a go at some point. Bumpy Road Brewery. What's up, Bumpy? Uh, he says, I'll be doing my last beer of the night vid while watching you live. Sweet Bumpy. I appreciate it, man. Um, you did not like that. You went to beer today at all. And that doesn't surprise me. Gooseberries. What the fuck? Anyway, so that's three down, and we have – where the hell is the knife? I'm a mess right now. Here it is. Let me grab this knife and cut this. Um, two, <clears throat> two beers from the same brewery because they have similar – Tatamagooch Brewing Company. Tatamagooch. Tatamagooch? Is that how you say it? I don't know. Tatamagooch Brewing Company, Nova Scotia. They're Jitney Dry Hop Sour, organic dry hop sour at that. 4.5% alcohol by volume, 473 milliliter, another uh, tall boy. Yeah, so dry hop sour. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It has a lot number and stuff on it. I'd assume it's relatively fresh. So looks like this is their standard, standard uh, label, and they just kind of change it up here. They have like a wrap on it. So yeah, a dry hop sour. I'm loving dry hop sours and sour IPA. So this actually looks pretty sweet. And I know, pretty sure Lee's a fan of this brewery. Clearly, if you send me a couple cans, he is. So awesome that I get a chance to try something from them. So thank you very much, Lee. Not only do I get one of them, but I get two. And this is also from them. And this is their Deception Bay IPA. Again, certified organic. So I guess this is an organic brewery. Um, which is cool. Uh, Bose being the other one that I know of in Canada, period, but in Ontario. 6.2% alcohol by volume. I'm not going to get into the whole, oh man, 
baby, a baby this pairs great with some shellfish, baby, some stinky cheese, and looks like some bacon wrapped hot dogs, baby. Oh my god, so excited! I'm not gonna get into the description of all these because obviously I'm going to review them or do a review them with Lee. Uh, he wants to do the alternate reality for sure. Goosh, had him a goosh. He says, yeah, they just changed the name info. Otherwise, labels are the same. Yeah, that's pretty much. That's cool, though. I like that. It's simple. It's easier for them, and I get it. So, sweet. Um, last two here. Looks like I might have to join the Beer Analysis 101 next week. I probably will, because the beer that has shown up, courtesy of Lee, is... Garrison's Juicy IPA. <laughs> so this actually has shown up in um, in Ontario, Canada, uh, and this upcoming week, I believe, I believe you guys are doing Juicy IPA. Well, I guess I'm a part of it, but yeah, on Nick Maxwell Star Beer Review Channel, he is doing this for next week's uh, Wednesday night Beer Analysis 101. This is a double IPA, comes in eight percent alcohol by volume, and it is from the Garrison Brewing Company out of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Unfiltered DIP. This is the March fifth can. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll give it a go. I'll be curious if this is fresher than the ones that they get in Ontario. But I've had some Garrison stuff courtesy of Lee before, and I'm looking forward to this one. I probably will join the panel then next week if I can make it happen because I didn't think I was going to get it. I wasn't going to go up to Ontario to grab it. So yeah, baby, we're going to do it. Um, last but not least, we have a beer from Two Crows, which I've seen. They have the old uh, 3D logo, and this is their Lice Table Beer. It comes in at 3.5% uh, alcohol by volume, 13 IBUs, another tall boy can, citrusy, refreshing, bright, and smooth, they say. Um, again, no date on it, but you know what? There's a lot of breweries uh, not putting dates on their cans and bottles, and baby, we could go into a whole thing. Date, date the cans, baby. We could do that, but you know what? I'm pretty sure this is relatively fresh. Not that it probably needs to be. It's a table beer. It's three and a half percent. What the freak? So yeah, uh, that does it for all of this beer mail. Um, I truly appreciate Ali for uh, not only being the first person to send me beer mail uh, on my channel, but also being one of the OG beer tubers and providing me years of entertainment along with all of your subscribers. I know you're never going to come back and do beer reviews, but Hopefully, we can get you on my channel to do some duo ones. He does want to do this one, the alternate reality. Uh, he definitely wants to do a duo review of that. And like I said, Lee, uh, well, and I'm also going to do Juicy IPA on the beer analysis. So those two will definitely be uh, reviewed live of some sort. Uh, but if you want to do any of the other four that you sent, let me know. I'd, I'd like to do a couple of them. But if we can only do one, that's cool too. But I definitely want to do some live reviews. So uh, we'll do one more read of the comments here. Chris on the 10 says, hi, Joe, LOL, juiced it, baby. Yeah, baby, that better, better be really juicy, daddy. Um, Eric Gilbert says, IPAs and the LCBO don't mix. Yeah, for uh, the viewers out there that aren't <laughs> from Canada and certainly not from Ontario, you don't understand the frustration that a lot of Ontario uh, natives have with um, the LCBO. They have a tendency to age their IPAs for like three or four months because that's what you do with IPAs. Like this is back 300 years ago and there's long voyages to India from um, from uh, Britain. It's not how it works. Uh, but the LCBO, honestly, that's how it works. And a lot of these cans will say like refrigerate. They'll just be hanging out on the shelves for weeks and months on end. But yeah, that's LCBO in a nutshell. Uh, Lee says all these cans are within two months. Sweet. So relatively fresh. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it, uh, especially the the black lager. I do like black lagers, and I just don't buy enough of them. So uh, that should be fun. The table beer from Two Crows should be a great time. Obviously, the crown jewel is the Fuller's Imperial Stout, mostly because I've been wanting to try this for quite a while since I knew it existed, and I've heard great things. And, yeah, probably save that for a special review. Um, yeah, I'll recap it real quick for people who missed it. Hey, live, the people watching again, I guess you could just skip this and be done with it. Um, the first beer, Chris, that I cracked open was um, the Fuller's Imperial Stout, as I just mentioned. He sent the box separately so I could have the whole experience, baby. Oh, you can't see my face. You don't want to see it, but yeah. So the Fuller's Imperial Stout, uh, we're, I'm, we're, I'm going to save this for a special review. So there's that. The next two cans I opened up were Abyss 
black lager, a Schwarz beer, and then uh, Malternate, what is it, Malternate Reality, which is a New England style IPA. We're probably going to do a duo review, Lee and I, on my channel relatively soon for that one. The next two were from Tatamagoosh, a brewing company out of Nova Scotia, Halifax. I believe, right, did I read that right? right after, uh, yeah, no, no, they're out of Tatamagoosh, Nova Scotia. What an idiot I am. But uh, he sent me their Jitney Dry Hop Sour. And then he sent me the Deception Bay IPA. Cool thing about them, organic brewery. So we'll see if that matters. And then the last two were the Juicy IPA from Garrison and the Two Crows Lice uh, table beer, 3.5% table beer. You don't see too many table beers, honestly. That's cool, uh, like a drinking like a drinking beer, a table beer. You just throw it on the table, people drink it. You don't have to break it down, baby. It's great. Um. What else we have? Lee says, yeah, we should review the Abyss too. Okay, so I'll put the Abyss and the Malternate Reality to the side, and we'll do a review of that. Uh, Greg is here, AK. So here I'm just going to throw this out there. If you ever see Beer Patrol, number one super fan, it's Greg trying to troll me with terrible comments like, where's your uniform, Joe, in every review? And he knows where it is. It's in his mom's closet. That's where it's at. But he says, oh, my God, he's got to be unboxing his new uniform. See how Greg rolls? Then he does a really poor impersonation of me. If it was better, I would approve of the troll, but Greg's terrible at trolling. But he tries. I give him, I give him credit. He tries. And then uh, Chris says, good job, Lee. Yes, fantastic job, Lee. So um, I don't want to make this a super long unboxing. It's already like 16, 17 minutes long. But uh, later tonight, I'm going to be going live on the Beer Flow show over on Rod J Beer Ventures channel. Uh, it's going to be him, Todd a Todd Wren, who doesn't have a channel like me about three months ago, and uh, Eric Alliance fan. We're just going to shoot the shit and talk and whatnot. So should be a pretty shit-tastic time, but it's always a great time, actually, especially when we have people pop in like Chris and Lee and you were to troll the comments. It's a lot of fun. But, yeah, anyway, I don't know if I'll do a beer mail unboxing live video every single time, but I do enjoy, like I said, I do enjoy the uh, uh, comments in which um, Nick, a.k.a. Maxwell Star, over at Maxwell Star's Beer Review, the aforementioned uh, host of Beer Analysis 101 every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Usually doesn't start to like 8.20 because uh, Nick usually has to poop, but then some other people sometimes have to poop or we got to wait for superstars like Matt to show up. But uh, next Wednesday, it's going to be Juicy Juicy IPA, Juicy Double IPA from Garrison, and I guess I'll be joining that. So, yes, Nick, to answer your question, oh, Juicy IPA for BA 101, indeed. Um, yeah, so uh, that's all we got going on. It's Nick's here, Lee's here, Chris is here. So thanks for all the comments from In Order, Lee, Earth, uh, Eric Gilbert, Bum, Bumpy from Bumpy Road Brewery, um, Chris from On the 10th, Nick over at Maxwell Star Beer Reviews. Appreciate you guys stopping by to troll me and, uh, I guess, watch this unboxing video. But anyway, what I was saying before, I was interrupted by Nick because that's how Nick rolls. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do live beer mail unboxings, but I do enjoy the interaction, so it might be something I do. Uh, it's it's a bit more fun, I feel, than maybe a pre-recorded uh, thing. So if you guys enjoy this more than me doing an actual pre-recorded live unbox or uh, a regular unboxing. I'll just do live unboxings because it's pretty fun, easier to set up. I don't really have to edit anything. It's easier. It makes life way easier. So anyway, that does it for the first ever beer mail here on the Beer Patrol. We did it live and it was a great time and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So if you watch this back, uh, let me know what you guys thought of it. And for those of you in the comments right now, I appreciate you stopping by. And until the next one, I'm gonna hit this. I'm gonna hit this hang up button like I'm Lance the Lush. I'm gonna hang out for like 10 minutes, and you guys can comment. Make nobody here. It's gonna be great. All right, not really. Talk to you guys later. Cheers. Oh wait, hey, hang on, hang on. I almost left. Hang on. I'm drinking Evil Twin Rainbow Nade. So this is an IPA that is brewed with grapefruit, passion fruit, mango, raspberry, and blueberry. And I just want to point out the color on this thing is pretty fantastic, and it's pretty tasty. Uh, there is not a review of this coming. This is just me drinking it, but I just wanted to throw it out there. Evil Twin does a whole lemonade series. They did a old-fashioned classic lemonade IPA, a pink lemonade IPA, a half-and-half half, uh, lemonade and uh, iced tea IPA. 
So I give them props for creativity. This drinks more like a fruit beer with a bit of, bit of hops than an IPA with actual fruit in it. Anyway, it was pretty tasty. Now I'm going to leave. See you guys later.